been a while since I had my hair cut. Sniff. Who saw that coming? Nope. Nope. <laughs> the only clue, there's one clue, which is that it starts off with this wonderful pink champagne light. It slowly gets darker and colder and grayer and more black and white. That's the only thing you've got. And also, somebody must have survived because that story survived. So one of those 120 people who was able to leave Treblinka had that memory in them. Well, first of all, this is a great way to do a low-budget film by shooting everything in extreme close-ups. You don't have to worry about sets or any of that kind of thing. And it, it worked very well. Uh, I guess we don't see the end coming because we don't associate New Zealand accents with the Holocaust. Somehow, it's just the accent is wrong for, for the character in that way, so therefore you do not see this end coming. I don't think anybody saw that. Um, and it's a very, it, she has to carry essentially the film entirely on her dialogue. Her, her eyes and her lips and then very trying to be expressive with very subtle parts of her face in this, right? And it, and it worked. But yeah, no one saw that him coming. But Paul said he didn't have a problem. He always found something to drink. I thought uh, it was, um, she was getting set up for the electric chair. I thought she had killed one of the uh, young men, you know, men or, or her father. That's very interesting. The, the, like you, you, you felt the, you felt the tension. You saw the, the dread. You felt the, the dread and the doom. Yeah, I felt the same thing about the hair being snipped. This is for another purpose. It's oh. here. See, I didn't see coming at all. So just by a show of hands, because now I'm curious, how many people actually felt the dread? There was something bad coming up. Yeah. Can anyone tell me what tipped them off? Yeah, I felt the same thing about the hair cut too. I think it was the. The, the way that the hair was being cut because especially for women like you just do not get your hair cut like that especially <laughs> if you haven't had your hair cut since you were 16 like that just you know you doesn't happen and um, the fact that the hairdresser you know the person doing the cutting wasn't speaking back to her there was no dialogue that led me to believe that she was being prepared for something ominous and while I didn't think electric chair, I thought something maybe like electroshock therapy or something scary like that. Yeah. See, it's fascinating that, that multiple people here went to, to something something full of doom. And I didn't pick it up. There was a couple other things. If you're really looking at analyzing the film, there's a slight tone shift. There's a musical note in the background that's very low, very quiet, picks up a little. This, the, the lighting changes. But you, you peg whether it's electroshock, electric chair, going to certain doom, they're like, certain doom is eminent. And the most interesting thing here is that this is a based on a true story. I mean, who knows how memory has shaped it over the generations, but it is based on something that occurred, which means one of those two people survived. I, I really like the claustrophobia. Yes. It was so tight, um, and you never got to see the whole person until the very end, and it was like the same thing that from her perspective as a narrator, you were never going to see her or her point of time as a whole picture. She had reduced it down to what she could deal with at that point in time. And there was that lovely metaphor between where she was, what her message was, and the way it was all enclosed. And even at the end when they had the broad shot, there was no window, there was no way out. It was still all really tight in and enclosed. And on that note, it broke my heart when she said thank you. She thanks him before she leaves. And that's the part that really just kind of like guts you. Because she's going, she knows that this situation that she's in is probably very dire. She knows that everyone around her, the person cutting her hair is in an equally bad position. Every, no one wins, this is a terrible situation. And the thing she focuses on is how beautiful her silk blue dress was. But her saying thank you made sense in the context of where she was in her narration. Yes, it did, because ultimately, Someone was listening just for that one little moment, and he can't even say anything back to her. That was the only humanizing thing. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating in that regard when you think about how it's pulled down and then blown out big. Who had an emotional response to it? Yeah, yeah a lot of people, right? It's a great film. Awesome. Well done for, for, this, for this director, for sure. And excellent performances. She does carry that piece with her face.